The text that calls for our attention this Lord's Day is our epistle reading for today from Philippians chapter 2, where we are told that Jesus became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Obedience. It's not a word that tends to bring a smile to the face right away. For at least a half a century, if not longer, our culture where we live has been urging disobedience as the real path to freedom and to prosperity. Don't listen to your parents. Don't listen to the government. Don't listen to your husband. Don't listen to your pastor. Don't listen to your boss. Authority, after all, we have been told, is the issue. It's the thing that holds people back from their best life. And therefore, disobedience is the only solution. Now, of course, there are times to disobey the authorities that God has placed into our lives, but those times and places are very few and far between. The scriptures would tell us that the only time when we are to disobey the authorities that God has placed in our life is when they forbid us to do something that God commands or they command us to do something God forbids. But our world would tell us there's like a million more reasons why you should do so in many times and in all sorts of places. Our Lord Jesus, though, was not influenced by such thoughts which surely existed in his day as well. And while our modern American ears might not like to hear it, it is certainly proper for us to say today that the reason Jesus walks into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday is be precisely because he is being obedient to his Father. The Father called him to walk into Jerusalem, and so he walked. He did not rebel, he did not turn backwards, and in so doing, he gave his body right into the hands of his adversaries to destroy him. As Paul says, he became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. No, he didn't do all of this because it just felt right in his heart. He didn't do it because he thought it would be easy. He didn't do it because he thought that somehow it would assure him a place of fame throughout the centuries. He did it because it was the Father's will for him to go, and therefore he went. As we hear about what happened on Palm Sunday, it might seem to us like being obedient to God's will was a rather easy thing to do on that day, that walking into Jerusalem was an easy choice to make. After all, we hear about those crowds that were there at Lazarus' resurrection, who were all there to praise him. We hear how the others around joined in those praises and began to laud him. We hear that the children in the temple continued their chants in his honor. The people, they waved their palm branches. They laid down their cloaks. They proclaimed that this was indeed the prophet Jesus from Nazareth. Jesus, he was not so naive as to what was about to occur. It was clear to him that he was walking into a trap. He was drawing near to the very people who wished to kill him. Yes, he walked right into their place of business. He did so because it was the Father's will. Although many of his followers hoped that he was going to Jerusalem to take a place of comfort upon a throne, Jesus knew that that was not the case. He knew that he was going to be mocked. He knew that he would be bruised. He knew that he was going to be pierced. He knew it so well that he would sweat blood in the garden, thinking about it. He knew it so well that he would ask the Father if there were any other way to accomplish the salvation of the world. He knew it so well that he went away by himself and prayed for strength. But there was a simple rule that he would not depart from in all he did. The one thing he would not do was to disobey his father. For he knew that the father was not only the authority standing above him, 
but he was also his helper going on before him. He could be authority, he could be obedient rather to the authority of his father because he knew in the end the father was the one who would bring an end to the attack of his adversaries. He would rescue him, and in rescuing him would rescue all people. Jesus trusted the Father, and therefore he placed his times into his hands. And so he came into Jerusalem. He rode in on the donkey, just as he was supposed to do. He came as a humble king, just as the Father desired. He did not turn away from the spitting or the mockery or the pulling of his beard, because to do so would be to disobey his Father. You see, even if others would declare him guilty, his own obedience would ensure that he would be found innocent by the ultimate judge. That is the obedience that our Lord showed. Obedience that did not care about personal comfort. Obedience that was not looking for a loophole of luxury. Obedience that trusted in the one to whom his life had been entrusted. And all of this, ultimately, because of your disobedience. Oh yes, your disobedience to the authorities that God has placed in your life. Disobedience to your parents, your husband, your boss. Disobedience to governmental authorities. Disobedience to the spiritual authorities God has placed in your life. And yes, disobedience to God directly not placing him first, not honoring his name, not treasuring his word, not following his ways or commands or living in accordance with the order he has given in creation. You know, Jesus, of course, would have been eternally obedient to the Father, regardless of all of this. But if you and I and all of humanity had not been so disobedient, the Father would have never needed to ask the Son to do what he did during Holy Week. Jesus' obedience could have been a much more pleasant route had it not been for our disobedience. And so do not this day take your disobedience lightly. Do not think that your disobedience has only led to Jesus being lauded in the streets of Jerusalem or being greeted with hosannas. Know for certain that your disobedience caused him to be mocked on the hills outside of Jerusalem and to be jeered at with cries of crucify. As the great Holy Week hymn says, You who think of sin but lightly, nor suppose the evil great, here may view its nature rightly, here its guilt may estimate. Mark the sacrifice appointed, see who bears the awful load, Tis the word the Lord's anointed, the Son of Man and Son of God. There are a thousand different ways that the evil one tries to get each one of us to believe that our sins could never add up to an awful load that someone else might have to carry. He lies and tells us that we have no choice but to sin. He tells us that everybody sins. He assures us that other sins are certainly more grievous than the ones we do. He assures us that God is so kind that surely he can't care all that much about sin. He convinces us at times that the things we do that are sinful are not sinful. He tells us that they are justified. He tells us that they're just the things we had to do in the moment. And all too often, we latch on to one of these lies or several of them and end up not feeling all that bad about our sin. Oh, we know we have sinned. We know that we are sinners. But we often don't grieve our sins. Our consciences are not terrified. We think that cart that holds our sins might have a few sticks and stones thrown into it. But we would never call it an awful load. But this week, if we will meditate upon our Lord's death, such lies will be taken away from us one by one. As the hosannas of today become the crucifieds of tomorrow, we will see the true nature of our sin. We will understand just how bad our disobedience is. You will understand how bad your disobedience is. And if we do, well, then we will see how good Christ's obedience is. 
you will see just how good Christ's obedience is. If you see that, then you will sing authentically, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You will sing the words they sang there on that first Palm Sunday in sincerity and in truth. You will join all of us as we rejoice together at the coming of our Lord. We will lay down everything we have. We will bow in obedience. We will rise up in praise because we know that this King does come to save us, to save us from our disobedience through his perfect obedience. If you understand that all today, well, then you get to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. For this is the simple truth you must know this day. You have been wildly disobedient. Jesus has been steadfastly and perfectly obedient for you. And you are saved. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. And then may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ rest upon you this day. In his name we pray. Amen.